So, you're counting calories, but you're not getting results. Hmm. But counting calories, it's easy, right? Just look up whatever you're eating on MyFitnessPal or Google and plug it into your food journal. <laughs> if only it were that simple. If you're someone who's counting your calories but for some reason isn't getting the results you want, this video is for you because you're not alone. You see, back in the winter months, I had mastered this delicious five cheese mac and cheese recipe. Nice and gooey and cheesy, mmm. So I made a few huge batches and put them in those nine by 13 casserole dishes. And then I would eat them over the next few weeks and months. But the funny thing is, someone got a little chunky over the next couple of months. I mean, I was putting that mac and cheese into my food journal and I was supposed to be eating at maintenance. So what exactly went wrong here? Well, turns out the problem was that I was just simply searching five cheese mac and cheese in my fitness pal and then putting in my food journal what I found there. And what did I find out? Well, this is the one I used. Homemade five cheese mac and cheese with the entire casserole dish being 4,120 calories. I mean, at the time I figured, well, five cheese is five cheese. Good enough. I mean, how big could the discrepancy be? Well, the answer to that question was pretty darn big. See, I found out that the five cheese mac and cheese that I made was 5,485 calories. So pretty much more across the board with almost twice as much fat. I was basically eating an excess of 1,365 calories with each batch. And just FYI, a pound of body fat is 3,500 calories. So it's not hard to see how I might have gained a bit of weight over the next couple of months eating all that. And I ate a lot of it. Now the real question is, how did I end up finding the actual macro and calorie count of the mac and cheese that I made? I did it by adding all the nutrition info of the base ingredients individually. All the cheeses, the pasta, the butter, etc., etc. And that, my friends, is what you need to do if you want to make your calorie counting accurate. Count the base ingredients. The reason is because base ingredients will more or less always be the same calorie count. One cup of rice is one cup of rice. Three ounces of salmon is three ounces of salmon. You're really not gonna see much discrepancy between different types of the same base ingredient foods. So don't be putting steak sandwich into your food diaries. Put the meat, the bread, and the toppings, and all that crap in individually. Now speaking of meat and whatnot, hmm. That is another big part of calorie counting that a lot of people have trouble with. You see, meat has a huge discrepancies when it comes to calories. Fattier cuts of meat have higher calories, higher fat, and less protein. Leaner cuts of meat are the opposite. More protein, fewer calories, less fat. I and mean, let's take a look at what this discrepancy might look like. On one side of the spectrum, we have pork belly, which is super fatty. I mean, you might be looking at 2,000 to 2,500 calories per pound of pork belly. On the other side, we have ground elk, which can go for as low as 520 calories per pound. So yeah, they're both like one pound of meat, but the pork belly is potentially four or five times more dense than the elk. So if you're logging your meat, make sure you know what cut the meat is. Usually grocery stores are good with this though, and they'll tell you if it's like 80, 20, 90, 10, 97, three, et cetera, et cetera. The next big thing is restaurants and fast food. See, I love me some Chipotle, and I have a go-to meal every time I go. It's a big ass 1,470 calorie burrito bowl. Oh, by the way, life pro tip, if you ask for double beans, double rice, and double cheese at Chipotle, they won't charge you extra. You're welcome. And I watched those Chipotle guys make them. And let me tell you, some of the staff give you bigger portions than others. Seriously, sometimes the bowls I get are gigantic. And other times they're only like a little bit bigger than normal. Like I'll eat one bowl and not be hungry for the rest of the day. So I've got a sneaky suspicion that those portions are a lot bigger and more inconsistent than what you'd think. So if you're eating out at a restaurant, my general advice would be to assume that the actual calorie count of what you're eating is a little bit higher than what it's advertised as. Especially if you're trying to lose weight, just to be on the safe side. You feel me? Another thing people seem to forget about is the liquids. And I'm not just talking about the drinks. I'm talking about oils, sauces, and dressings, and that sort of thing. Let's put it this way. One tablespoon of coconut oil is about 117 calories, which is a little bit more than half of a cup of cooked rice. 
So if you're cooking with more than one tablespoon of coconut oil, that can really add up. And it's not just the oils you use. Those sauces and condiments you use, yeah, they are not a small amount. And you also have to consider that most real tablespoons are actually a lot bigger than the tablespoon measurement. So you could very well be getting a couple hundred extra calories on just these liquids alone. And over time, that adds up. At the end of the day, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Do you really think a donut or cookie is gonna be just 200 calories? I mean, unless it's a really tiny one, sure. But chances are the one you're eyeballing probably isn't. And at the end of the day, guys, nothing is gonna be 100% perfect. But if you follow these tips, there's a good chance that your calorie counting is gonna be more accurate. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in more beginner fitness tips, check out my free beginner fitness guide that's available for download in the description below. And don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. My channel is a cosplay fitness channel. So fitness stuff and really nerdy stuff. And if that's your thing, stick around. All right, everyone, I will see you next time.